for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Continuing on from our discussion yesterday, this was the chart of the E-mini S&P, the June contract. And as you can see, that we were looking for a high to come in today, right around uh, 43.92. The high was 43.94, so we missed that one. But we were also looking at the September E-mini S&P, and I want to get that up because, holy moly, something's wrong with my charts again. Oh, I know what it is. Shut the front door. And I'll get that fixed in a heartbeat. Aha, very easy. Okay, there was the E-mini in the September. That came in at 43, uh, excuse me, 44.38, and uh, we sold it there, and now we put our stop at break even. That's only down a few points from the from that area to probably, given the fact when the Fed comes in, these stops will probably be taken out either by a lot or a little, and then we'll see what happens. But at that point, we want to be as risk-free as we possibly can going into a Fed report. Now, we had two trades today that were uh, both stopped out that looked, gee, they were just absolutely perfect Gartleys. Uh, the first one here was the uh, British pound. We ended up losing $250. Hold on just a second, cowboy. There we go. We, we lost uh, $250 in the British pound. And we also took a loss uh, in the euro because it also went higher. We took another uh, $250 loss uh, in the euro. And uh, so uh, actually it was $300. Uh, in the euro, so that's a $550 uh, starting out the day. But the day wasn't a total loss because uh, we were able to buy the uh, soybeans, making a 382 retracement like we've been talking about for five or six days in here. And then also in the corn, both of those have been really big winners so far today. And uh, so that makes up with anything. Uh, and, and you know, you have losses. I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to show you the patterns as they pop up so that we see them when they occur. Our guest today will be the king of the hill, folks. We got uh, Mr. Stan Harley will be coming up as our as our guest. And uh, he's going to be uh, talking about some of these cool looking cycles that he's been talking about for some time. But I have to show you this one, folks. This happens to be the Christmas corn. That's a December corn. Uh, we made some pretty good money in that. Didn't get out, and uh, we got out way too soon, of course. We were able to buy it back today, and it's added another 15 cents. But what we've done now, you see, both in the soybeans and in the, and in the corn and in the S&P, we moved our stop to break even. And the reason for that is, folks, it's a game of not – losing very much money so take care of your losses and the profits will take care of themselves if it gets back down there it probably isn't any good that's all we know whether this thing will work in the stock market or not i have no clue it's just a pattern and you know when i do the newsletter i work with john jameson john jameson and i have the a matching iq of 140 the difference is for me to get to 140 i had to take the test three times Okay, uh, John is just a really brilliant guy. He's a forward thinker. He was involved on the Internet when it first started back in the 80s. Uh, he's been involved with cryptos since they started, and, and he's, just, he's just a forward thinker. And uh, he's been helping me with – helping me. He's been doing the newsletter for me for four years. I've known John for 20 years. I had no idea. I knew he was smart all along, but I didn't realize how smart he really was until about – uh, well, he came here uh, it was about five, year, four years ago and spent uh, three and a half weeks with me. And day and night, he actually stayed here at the house. And uh, it was really a, an experience to, to listen to all the things that he's done. 
because you know, he's retired at 32 and he's uh, it's in his 50s now. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. But uh, what I do is I, I look at patterns, folks. I, I, I had a real breakthrough. When I worked at Drexel Burnham during those years from 76 through 82, all I did was A, B, C, D patterns. That's really all I knew and that's all I did. I had some soybean guys, uh, Oscar McClure, Dave Nelson, Jim Sibbett and Earl Hattity helping me along with some of the fundamentals ideas. But my, my whole premise was just looking at what the charts were going to do. I, I never wavered from that. Every time I did waver from it, I ended up, you know, putting in my head between my legs and, uh, you know, what do you say, kiss your rear end goodbye because it just never worked. Now, I talked about the article that's in Barron's this week with the headline of the Barron's. I'll bring it up here to show you that the, this bull has legs. And, uh, folks, I've, I've been watching Barron's for 60 years, and uh, I, I just don't have a great deal. I, I think these guys are really smart that do these things, and they're great writers and stuff. But they're, you know, they're involved in the emotionalism of these markets. And, my gosh, if you watch what's going on with CNBC and also with uh, the uh, – Bloomberg, my gosh, it's almost like politics. They're so involved with artificial intelligence, as they should be. But for heaven's sakes, there's other things in the world besides that. Now, I'm looking at uh, – I hope Stan, <clears throat> Stan will cover this. This was sent to me by one of our listeners that follows uh, a couple of cycle guys, and I wanted to get this up here. Uh, I guess it's from uh, – um, Twitter or something like that. I'm not sure, but he sent it to me. I wanted to uh, show you because Stan's work is far more superior to something just as simple as this. But look at these, look at these eight-week cycles. I mean, my goodness, they've been, you know, really pretty good, and we're we're bouncing up against one right as we look. All I'm looking at, folks, is when I put a trade on. You know, I'm not looking at a 10-day pattern or anything in the S&P. Yeah, maybe you get lucky, you get 10-day pattern. But if I can find a nice A, B, C, D pattern that I can trade, that's what I'm going to do. You know, that that's my gig. I'm not, I'm not, I don't care if it goes to 4,800. Might go to 4,800 today. That's not what I do. I do one thing. And you remember what Curly said, you know, do one thing and try to do it well. And that's what I really try to do. If you remember, when we started this week, we said to be really, really aware of what's going on in the old moo cows because the cattle market has made a major turn down folks and as you can see from this pattern it's only a 20 minute pattern but it covers from where we were last friday you can see there's the perfect a b c d right up there at 174 and it's already dropped below the page here it's already up thirteen hundred dollars for a 400 risk it's up thirteen hundred dollars so that's what we're watching. Now, if we get stopped out of the uh, S&P, uh, not a problem because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to fall back on page 222 in Gartley's book, and that's what I'm going to be watching for is this ABCD pattern. I'm going to sell that first ABCD, and wherever that is, then I'll put my stop you know, within my risk parameter there, and that's where we're going to take a break here. Stan Harley's our guest at the break, folks. We'll be right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds, as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio Tom O'Brien is here to help Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you Tom's daily market newsletter market insights is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're back, and I brought a chart up here. Uh, this is the S&P over the last seven months. It shows the three ABCD patterns uh, that are there. The main thing is here, if you remember, a week ago Friday, we were sitting right there at that uh, 431 level, and it looked like it was going to be the absolute dead ringer uh, top in the S&P being at the exact 61% retracement. And then Sunday night, it opened higher, and it you know continued to go up. But uh, if you look at all the ABCDs here, we're within a really, really small tolerance of all three of them being completed now. Whether they get completed or not, I don't know. What I do is I get, I look at those and then I go down to my smaller time frames. And if I see a, a chart on a smaller time frame, like I was looking at here uh, in the September here at 44.38, it tells me that I don't have to risk very much at that point. And, you know, may or may not be a high. I don't really care about that. I just want to know how much I'm going to risk going in. And in fact, when you're in Fed Day, I mean, this everybody gets so emotional about this, and they're all expecting, you know, the Fed is just going to wave their hand and say, okay, we surrender, no more interest rate in increases. <laughs> Be careful, folks, because uh, they don't always do what they say they're going to do. So those are just a few of the things that are on my mind today. As I look at it, it's all about the risk control, folks. I don't mind losing two trades. This is the first time we've lost two trades in a row. Uh, for the 24-7 in quite a while. They were very small losses, but they were offset by some nice profits. And so, but th that's that's what the game's all about. It's not, you know, it's not what happened yesterday. It's what's going to happen tomorrow. you got to forget what happened yesterday. The one the one chart, the two charts that pe people ask me, what, 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 am I, what am I really looking at? What am I really thinking? Here's what I'm really thinking. And I, I and I believe me, I've been doing this a long time, so it's not, uh, not, uh, uh, I think about it a lot, okay? Here's where we were, all right? Look, this is where we were. 
you see that you see this these these seven or eight stocks that we talk about Tesla Amazon uh, Apple uh, the Nvidia Tesla uh, Google all of those stocks uh, Microsoft uh, meta all of these seven stocks that's seven stocks out of the s p of 493 other stocks okay this is the this is the market you can see that these are the market those stocks have been running the market back when i started doing this the stock the dow this is when i was a kid the dow jones had a thing called the nifty 50 it wasn't the dow jones it was the s p but they had the nifty 50 in the s p there were 50 stocks back then you know polaroid uh 3m um Let's see, Polaroid, 3M, IBM, uh, digital equipment, a whole bunch of those stocks like that. Some of them are not even in business anymore. And but anyway, that that's what that's all about. And when you when I watch the news each morning when I get up at four o'clock in the morning and I and I see the emotionalism of these uh, reporters and stuff, I mean, my guy, some of them are so uh, they're giddish, almost like they were during the dot com era. Not quite that dot com era. I, I'll never see another era like that. In my lifetime, you folks probably will. It might be next week. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that's all I'm looking at. Then when I saw that picture of the economist or the uh, the uh, Barron's picture, and Boyle, I, that that to me is uh, my college professor that started me looking at that. He felt that the only you know use for the Barron's and all the Wall Street Journal was for the lining of his uh, of his Oscar, which was his uh, parrot that. Uh, that he kept all the time. So anyway, that that's what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at risk control. I, I you know, people ask me, why are you doing it here? Can't you follow the trend? Folks, I follow the patterns. I don't care about the trend. I should, you know, probably I'm 100% sure because why couldn't I buy and just watch it go up all the time? I look at patterns. If I see an ABCD, that's what I that's what I live and die by. Remember yesterday we were talking about the Canadian dollar. Look at this Canadian dollar. And we were saying that the, the triple bottom is failing. It was very, very easy to see that the market just kept going lower. It didn't stop going lower, you see, and it's still going lower today. So that is no longer a triple bottom, you see. And that's, that's what you have to do. Look at the A, B, C, D on the upside. It's absolutely perfect. Look. And this is in a downtrend, okay? So you tell me what the trend is right here. The trend is up, but you look at it from here, the trend is down. All I'm looking at are patterns that will give me an edge, and that's all I'm looking for. Count the number of bars up in the A and B leg. Count the number of bars up in the C, D leg. It will give you a nice edge, and then when you start down, that's it. Somebody says, why don't you enter on a valid trend line? Folks, I I. I know that valid trend lines work because I used them for years. But these numbers that I look at up in here, to me, they're accurate enough that I can. I don't have to wait for a trend line to turn. I have an idea that this is where it's supposed to turn. That's all. It's not a. It's not a big deal. It really isn't. Now we have Stan Harley coming up, who, you know, he's the research specialist in cycles for the for the stock market, and I'm sure he's going to give us some really cool looking things to work with. Now the second thing that I talked about getting back to that same patterns of the S&P of these uh, the seven stocks that have been running the E-mini if, if you look at this and just and this was t done by somebody on the internet was kind enough to send it to me but this is basically what those seven stocks have done versus the rest of the market you can see and you can see there's drive one here there's drive two here and there's drive three here and it's up in this area right here this is a week old so it's some of them have gone higher some of them have gone a little bit lower but the apple stuck at 185 probably on its way to 288 or whatever it's going to go to anyway that's what we're watching here that that could possibly it i'm trying to get a lead on it now boy the, the, there's that boy again <laughs> you can take the boy out of the farm but you can't take the farm out of the boy anyway the main thing is is that what i'm looking here is if this happens to be it and this is a key day and that pattern is correct then that's fine if the pattern's not correct I'll go back to game plan two, and I'll wait for my next entry. That's all I look for, folks. I don't try to keep it, you know, I keep it as absolutely as simple as possible. That's what I'm doing. I'm answering as many of these questions as I can because I know you people have questions about this stuff, and that's it. Here is the stock of Tesla. We were talking about this yesterday. It was up 13 days in a row. Of course, 
Today's the 14th day, and now Tesla is down a little bit. You can see that the ABCD price uh, swing on this measured up into this box right here. The bottom of the box was uh, uh, 162, 262, whatever that is. Is that a two or a one? That's a 262. It's a 262 handle up in here. And so that completed the ABCD pattern, just like this Gartley right there. There's a beautiful Gartley pattern, A, B, C, D. And look at that, 13 days in a row, straight up. So that's what you're trying to find. Stay tuned, folks. we got Stan Harley coming up, 877-927-6648. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Stan Harley in the house. Stan, how are you doing today? I am doing just awesome, Larry. Well, you look pretty sharp with that striped shirt and everything, man. You're really becoming a, a regular New York or a, a, what do you call it, a New Jersey guy now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank hey, you, thank you. Hey, and I wore my tie today as well, you know. I got I, I, you know, Stan, I probably have three thousand dollars worth of ties back there over the years, and I tell you, I, well, maybe more because I wore ties all the time. And let's forget about that stuff. Everybody wants to know what's going on. What do we do next? Tell us, please. 
Okay, well, let's uh, let's take take a look at some charts, uh, shall we? That's what we um, want to see. What I brought today are some charts of the uh, S and P and the Dow, and uh, and I think it might give us some ideas of where I think things are heading. Of course, we got the big Fed day today coming up here. Yep. The announcement coming up real real soon. So, yep. uh, what uh, what are the technical suggesting? Um, here is a chart of the S and P 500 going back. 20 years ago. And I shared this uh, with you, uh, oh, about a month and a half ago, so I'm updating it. But yep. what I found, Larry, is um, the pattern from 20 years ago and the pattern today is just remarkably, I mean, remarkably similar. Um, so kind of keep that image in your mind for the moment, and then let's uh, fast forward 20 years. Here it is to the present. I ran this off uh, about an hour ago. And notice the similarities. Um, Wow, um, we made a low in October of last year, just like we did in the prior year, I mean, 20 years ago. Well, heck, I just laid the two charts on top of each other to, uh, to make it a little easier to explain. The top chart is 20 years ago, 2001 through 2003. The bottom chart is the current. And uh, what I've done with the purple vertical lines is uh, lined up the lows. And you can see within a day or two or three, they line up with exactly the same dates as 20 years ago. For example, 20 years ago, we made a low in October on October the 10th. In 2022, 20 years later, the bottom occurred October 13th. Uh, in late wow. uh, 2002, we made a low uh, right near the end of December. We did the same thing again here uh, in December of 2022. Then we made another low in mid-March 20 years ago, we did exactly the same thing within a day or two of exactly the same date um, here in 2023. Okay, look at the pattern. I've drawn the uh, purple arrows. The, uh, the high 20 years ago occurred on June 17th. What's today, June 14th? So one, two, three, four trading days of 20 years ago. If, I underscore if, the pattern were to continue uh, as it did 20 years ago, it would suggest we are very, very close to some kind of a high and we might get a little shakeout lasting a couple of weeks into uh, into early July. Um, okay, you know, cool. these patterns work until they don't. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been showing this with you now for a couple of months and it just keeps yes. on working. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, and you, at you some said point, that, yeah. I know how this stuff works. At some point, they cease to be to be similar, but right now it still seems to mirror the pattern from 20 years ago. It's pretty much spot on. Okay, this is the kind of stuff we like to see. Please continue. Um, here is a chart of the Dow Jones Industrials and the prior, prior charts were the S&P. This is the, uh, the Dow Industrials from a little over an hour ago. Uh, and uh, I've, I've had a similar chart on the air with you uh, for the last few months. There is a down sloping trend line emanating from November the 8th, 2021, which has essentially governed the pattern of highs on the Dow Industrials. So as you can see how this line has come downhill, each of the highs since that date have been either right on the line or a little bit above or a little bit below. We're a little bit above it right now. But until this trend line gets broken convincingly to the upside, you have to you have to give it its due. And right now, it's it's pretty much got a glass ceiling on the market. Um, one more thing that is, is not trivial here, but I want to point out some Fibonacci-Lucas relationships that cluster in the present time frame. Um, I talk a lot about Lucas numbers, as you well know. Um, I find that Lucas counts in terms of trading days or any type of units from high to high or from low to low tend to be most important. Fibonacci numbers seem to work better from low to high or high to low. Uh, and when I mean Fib numbers, it could be their multiples like times two, times four, times five. And the same thing with Lucas numbers, times two, mm, times four, and that's pretty much it with Lucas numbers. But just in the recent past, uh, measuring from the October 13th low of last year, we are right now 170 trading days from that low, uh, low to high. That's Fibonacci number 34 times five. Okay. okay. Next, uh, we had a high, as you can see there on the screen, 
on December the 13th of 2022. Okay, let's use the Lucas counts because Lucas from high to high uh, it seems to be the most often. We are right now uh, exactly 123 Lucas trading days from the December 13th high, which is the highest high on the Dow chart, by the way, uh, from the October low. So that's something to pay close attention to. And we are, as I said, right now we're 123 trading days from that date. Um, the next high occurred on February the 2nd, and we are 94 trading days, which is Lucas 47 times two from that high. Uh, the most recent low occurred on May the 24th. We are 16 trading days, which is um, um, Fibonacci eight times two. So I've got a clustering of Fibonacci Lucas counts right in here between say here in the next two, three days. So the, the, the technical underpinnings are strong, but not certain, but strong for the market to stall out right in here. And uh, uh, that may happen, it may not happen, but nevertheless, uh, the, the underpinnings are very, very compelling for the market to stall out right in here. And we shall see. Sometime between now and the next two or three days, I, I think that's highly plausible. Wow, it's really good. Please continue, my friend. Oh, wait, wait a minute. We might have a. Uh, hold on, I can tell you. See how much time we got left here. Uh, we've only, we've only got a second left. Uh, take it. Pay a few bills. Why don't here we continue after the break, Larry? Let's do that. We're going to pay a few bills for TFNN, folks, and then we'll be right back. Oh, uh, Stan, I got my my clock was wrong. We got a, a minute and twenty seconds. So if you want to cover something else before you go to the next chart. How about the question that people are asking me, are you considering the, the seven stocks, you know, Tesla, Amazon, you know, they, they call them Magnific Magnificent Seven. Does that weight your uh, analysis? But you look at the broad market, don't you, Stan? I mean, you just don't pick out seven stocks. I don't just look at seven stocks. I look at I look at the big five indices. The major, yeah. major for those for me, the big five are the Dow Industrials, the Dow Transports. Oh the S&P 500, the NASDAQ composite, and the New York composite. And I tried to make a sense of whether or not we have confirm confirmation among those five or some type of divergences. Um, okay. But yeah, just a few individual stocks don't really factor into my analysis. I'm, I'm more of an index kind of a guy, and I want to look at the interplay among those big five. And That's the evidence good. right now is very compelling, not certain, of course, but very compelling. We could stall out here uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, before we resume the uptrend. Okay, we're going to stay with Stan Harley when we get back, folks. Don't miss a thing. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. 
Educating Investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We're back with Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter, and please continue, my friend. Absolutely, Larry. Um, let's uh, shift our focus uh, from the stock market to uh, something else that uh, a lot of folks probably have an interest in, and that's uh, home prices. Um, I track the uh, the Case-Shiller series of market indices very closely, uh, and uh, here's the, the latest data. There's a two-month lag in the data, of course, but um, uh, the latest data from, from Case-Shiller for the national index uh, show that prices uh, may have peaked about uh, the middle of last year. They have pulled back, but here's what's interesting. Uh, the blue dots on the screen there represent the monthly price bars and the, uh, the data in red is an 18 month moving average that I have applied to the graph. What I find, it, it's very primitive, but it, but it works quite well, a simple buy-sell signal. When the monthly price bars cross either above or below that 18-month moving average, it triggers uh, either a buy si signal or a sell signal. Um, just going back in time, you can see um, in uh, 1998, the bars moved sharply above the 18-month moving average where I have my mouse cursor, and we had a buy signal which remained in effect until late 2006. Prices topped out then, and then the monthly price bars broke below the 18-month moving average, stayed below it until uh, early of uh, 2012. So if, had you bought real estate during this time period, well, you, you got hurt pretty badly. <laughs> However, if, uh, if you had just been patient, waited for a decisive break back above that 18-month moving average, uh, that would have rendered a buy signal. And Trends in real estate tend to run for long periods of time. So uh, it's, it's rare that you get a fake out. They last for generally years. And we've been on a, on, a, on a tear, really, in real estate. The index has gone from about 135 or so on the national up to just north of 300. So you're looking at more than a, more than a double in real estate prices since 2012. Um, now, Prices, the monthly price bars have pulled back to that 18 month moving average, but the latest data point ticked up. So it did not break below the 18 month moving average yet. So uh, technically, from a technical analysis perspective, using a very simple um, 18 month moving average as a reference, we're still on a buy signal in real estate. Um, file that one away. Uh, for the moment, and then let's look at the next chart, which uh, is is a little more frightening, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, wow. This is uh, the 30-year interest rate. This is what one would pay if one went out and took a 30-year uh, a loan to buy a home. Wow. And of course, <laughs> the topic of today is interest rates, uh, although the Federal Reserve does not directly control uh, the 30-year rate, 
that, that we all pay when we take out a loan to buy a house, uh, they are they are indirectly related. They're 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 they're, they're somewhat tied together. Um, but as you can see, rates have gone from um, two ish and change yeah. to uh, to seven in a very very short period of time in about two years, and wow. uh, I don't that, that that's that's been painful for sure. Well, just stop and think someone that tries to buy. I mean, you're talking the mortgage is going to be you know, three times what it was, you know, because most of it's going to be sure. an interest anyway, because most people only put a small amount down. You know, Stan, when I bought my first house back in California, I, this was back in, oh, dear, back in the 60s, uh, 65, I bought a, a, a VA repo up there in Santa Maria, yeah, this is when they built. Uh, I'm taking your time away. Please keep talking. No, I don't, no, go ahead, please. No, well, anyway, that I bought that house for twenty five dollars down. That was a closing cost on a VA repo. In other words, it's been repossessed. Somebody couldn't pay it, and so I lived in it for for two years. And by then, pr prices had start in California had started their meteoric rise that continued. Do you know, Stan, my house there in Westlake Village, which was a you know it was a tract house. It was a nice house, thirty three hundred square feet. It's on the market for one point seven million dollars, and I paid thirty two grand for it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'd I like lived to, uh, just like, down the I'd street like from me in Cam Rio for, uh, for years, many years as well. <laughs> um, I know that market well, and it, like the rest of the country, has had a meteoric rise. Yeah. Um, a lot of real estate people are fond of saying the most important words are location, location. Yeah. I, I, I disagree with that. I think the most important words are market timing. <laughs> yeah. um, because whether we look at the National Index, we look at the Los Angeles area, index, the Phoenix index, which you, you are part of, uh, the New York Metro index, where I live now and down in New Jersey, um, they all have this same waveform that I'm showing on the screen right now. They all reflect the same waveform that the national index is reflecting. They all tend to make their highs and lows together, although when you get to the final terminal point, either a high or a low, often there are divergences. Um, think of it like a, a stock price chart. We look at the Dow, we look at the NASDAQ, we look at the S&P, we look at confirmations, we look for divergences, and it's the same kind of mindset. But right now, um, um, I'd say we are in a topping zone, but it might be premature to say the top is in until we see um, the national index in particular. The LA index, by the way, has broken below its 18-month moving average, but the national index has not. So some divergences are starting to pop up, and it's suggestive very, very suggestive, very compelling from a technical analysis standpoint that home prices are in a topping zone. Okay, now just to sum up, uh, what you're looking at now is between the 14th and the 17th of June, there should be some type of an intermediate top coming into the stock market, then down into July, and then uh, up, up, and away. Is that pretty much what your analysis is that's, saying? That's pretty much what I'm thinking, Larry, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I know two great minds that think that way. You and Larry Williams are pretty much exactly the, looking at exactly the same thing. So oh. we'll certainly be watching it. Uh, you know, that'll be really, really interesting to see, you know, how these things uh, unfold. But the guy I, I was unaware of Larry's view. What has what has Larry been suggesting? Uh, he's saying uh, top in here. He doesn't give the exact time, but he said sometime here in June, and then he said the middle of July, around the fifteenth. He does put put that date. He said it doesn't mean anything. It just means it's the middle of July. He's looking for like a three-week correction, and he think it's got a chance to really be a nasty one. He said the worse th that it is, the better. Uh, you remember Chris Carolyn, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, Chris has got this date here that he's had since 1990 that he thinks is going to be really big, and that's on the 25th of June, which happens to be a Sunday. And so uh, I, I've got that marked on my calendar just to look at it. But he also had that date back in uh, 1987. Well, most people did. That was that August uh, 27th high that we had in the stock market. You know, that was the big harmonic convergence type thing. So I don't know if that's a related to type. I don't know if he works for Elliot anymore or not, but they never mentioned him in his work. So. Uh, his work is okay, but, you know, I'm short-term oriented. You know, between Wednesday and Tuesday, that's long-term for me. Well, it's Tuesday to Wednesday, not Wednesday to Tuesday. Hey, buddy, thanks for joining us. We're going to have you back on real soon, okay? 
My pleasure. Look forward to it. It's our pleasure to have you on. You're a real stand-up guy. Thank you very much, Dan. We'll see you soon. Okay, buddy? If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. I've posted the weekly chart of the Treasury notes. As you can see, we're in a downtrend, and the bounce off of that last low was not very much. That tells us interest rates are still going to be going higher, folks. So uh, I don't know what the Fed's going to do this time, but don't be surprised if they start raising rates again because uh, they're not going to be dropping rates, I don't believe. I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like from uh, the cheap seats here in uh, Tucson, Arizona. But uh, be, make sure that no matter what you're doing you know, during the Fed, if you're trading during that time, to keep your stop working because – my goodness, you know, these things can go absolutely nuts in either direction, and they usually do either direction. So just make sure that you do that. Uh, if you did the trade like we were looking at today, what happened to be uh, selling the S&P September at uh, 44.38, your stop is 44.38. So you break even. You don't have to risk very much on that. And that's the main thing that you want to be paying, you know, close attention to.
so I, I hope that uh, I hope that helps. It's all about risk control, folks. So keep your risk, you know, as near to your vest as you possibly can, so that you you're always around to play the game and you'll still be in the game. And that's the real key, because no matter what happens after he's done talking, the markets are going to continue trading. And you know, whether it's a day or two or three days, you're going to catch somebody's moves. You're going to miss some of the moves. You can't get them all. You try to get little bits and pieces. I knew back in 1980, after being with Drexel for five years, that I knew that I could beat the markets because just this ABCD, that's what I used. Now, when I got away from ABCDUs and got a little of astrology or GAN, I always got my hand slapped. So just remember, folks, keep it as simple as possible. It's not how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. And if you keep that right in front of you, you're going to be okay. Look at that chart and ask yourself, how much do I have to risk to see if I'm going to be right? So we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Wealth trade.